Hello everyone, I am Lakshmi Priya Nayar. Welcome to the second season of Indian Stents Get Updated. Today we have Dr. Dilip Kumar from Medica Super Speciality Hospital, Kolkata with us. He is going to throw some light on how the healthcare landscape is evolving with the advent of technology and its progress. Let's see what he has to say on this subject. Hello, Dr. Dilip Kumar. Welcome to our series on Indian Stents Get Updated. We are very glad to have you with us. To begin our interaction, I would like to talk to you about medical education. You uh, are an interventional uh, cardiologist, but you are also involved with the academia. So, how does medical education in India need to transform? Yeah. Uh, at the outset, uh, uh, let me uh, start by saying that nowadays the things are looking very optimistic. Okay and uh, make in india and every, every the, all these voices they are not only you know in words and you know uh, uh, like in talking but uh, this is in reality so i see a lot of good indian companies coming up with good stands and we'll discuss uh, talk on that uh, coming to academia uh, you see uh, 10 years back when we did our uh, super specialization in cardiology there was mostly dm seats okay and then came dnb cardiology and then came uh, private hospitals, even uh, like institution-based training, uh, advanced training, focused training. And uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, combined courses now being run uh, in many institutions uh, in support with, uh, you know, industry, in support with the, you know, foreign, you know, institutions. And it, it's uh, looking uh, really up. Uh, and I hope uh, this focused, you know, uh, learning and teaching uh, uh, will take it more forward. Okay. So how do we also go about making our practice more evidence-based? Yeah. Is research the answer? Can clinical trials help? See, most of the, you know, data we have is coming from Western and American data, you know, and we are just following it up. And most of the new technologies and new devices which are coming, they have to be, uh, they have to generate some data. Okay, and it has to be evidence-based. You have got a good product, but if it is not being evaluated in a properly, you know, well-planned study, it's not going to work, and uh, you can't market it. So it's very important that uh, these trials, studies, uh, they have to, uh, you know, being carried on. And uh, Indian uh, studies now, they are coming up, okay. And uh, when we, we were students, we used to see only, you know, foreign data and all. Uh, very less institutions like Colonel Institute of Medical Sciences, CMC Valor, they had their own data. Uh, but now uh, uh, it's important to generate basically data, randomized control trials to market and uh, to bring any new technologies to, you know, uh, into practice. Yes. Okay. So let's take the example of stents as you already mentioned it. So in the case of stents, how have, you know, trials like uh, Talent RCT helped you in better decision making? Before uh, Talent. Uh, there was not really a single good trial uh, based on uh, Indian stents, okay. And uh, more, uh, more than giving a, you know, scientific, uh, you know, uh, statement and uh, scientific evidence, it has given us the entire Indian, you know, uh, subcontinent uh, confidence that uh, we can also generate data. And talent was a very well scrutinized, you know, study and definitely showed that, uh, uh, Supraflex cruise stent was uh, at par with the Zan stent, which was a, which is considered even now as a gold standard. And uh, maybe uh, newer, more trials like Tuxedo 2 and multi-talent study will give us more insight. Okay. So since the results of this study came out, do you see a growing acceptance for Indian stents? Definitely. Are and more and more doctors adopting yeah. this stent? See, see, there are only two ways to uh, market a device. One, it has to be good. And then it has to be backed up with good scientific data. Mm. And then automatically the results will be better. So if you are comfortable with the device, you have got good backup data. And uh, when you keep on doing these devices, you come to know that these data were also correct and the claim was also right. So this is the only way forward. 
Yes. Okay. Since we are already speaking about stents, yeah. how do you see these uh, technologies in uh, stents evolving? What will be the trends in the coming years? Yeah, stent, uh, you know, uh, because it is being used in many patients. So this is something like a kind of indispensable kind of medical technology. Okay. So it's not like uh, uh, only uh, rarely a few patients are going to have some kind of you know, device. Stent, many, the commonest reason of uh, uh, death in any population, an elderly population, is cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. coronary disease. Mm -hmm. So stents have come a long way mm -hmm. from bare metal stent to dragonic stent. Then there were studies on polymers, okay, the durable polymers, then uh, bioabsorbable polymers, then also BBS came. The stent technology is, you know, under evolution. But the more the stent technology is growing, we have come to know that the thickness of the stent is very important. Mm. So if a stent is less than uh, 100 micrometer, you know, thick, so it is going to give good results. If it is less than 70, it is good, uh, going to be given even better results. So this is the evolution from BMS to DAS, polymers, if it will with, you know, uh, uh, the drug which is there, then uh, bioabsorbable nature of the scaffold and thickness of the stent and deliverability. So however good the stent is, it has to go there inside. You have to place the stent down in the, in, the, in the lesion and deploy it. So delivery system has to be good enough uh, to negotiate this kind of any stent to a particular lesion, which is uh, lesion which can be calcified, can be tortuous. So stent technology, the only the platform, the drug, the, and the delivery, si the delivery system, these all are important. And there is a constant evolution of all these three systems. And nowadays we have good stents and uh, uh, good support system as well. We have got mother and child catheters nowadays. The way forward is uh, improving all, on all these components, three components which I discussed, and uh, hopefully we'll get even better stents. So you are talking about giving uh, importance to the smallest of details, Correct. so that we have improved efficiency and yeah. efficacy. Okay. So we are also looking at an era of intelligent machines. So do you see a lot of uh, adoption of AI and IoT in healthcare? Definitely. Like uh, healthcare is, uh, uh, you know, has also started adopting AI, and uh, uh, robotics is one example. So. If, uh, if, a, if an operator is there, uh, you know, standing uh, beside the fluoro machine and then uh, under radiation he has to work for three, four hours, uh, definitely the efficiency which he was working two hours back may not be the same in the fag end of a procedure. And the result of procedure can be, you know, uh, can be changed. Uh, so the robotics have come where uh, the, the operating doctor is not mandated to be inside the lab. He is sitting outside in the console and then he is directing the robot to do uh, and you know fix up and the minor details can be you know examined and worked on and uh, in addition to this robotics uh, there are a lot of new developments which can be a game changer in entire healthcare system is, is uh, also underway like all these even smartphones uh, television screens television sets they not only give us the entertainment give us the information but they are also you know receiving some signals from us mm. whatever we are talking uh, any noise uh, they are receiving, okay. So we produce certain kind of noise when we breathe normally, and uh, there are certain kind of noise when we uh, produce when we are terminally ill or we have a cardiac arrest. Mm. So these devices like smartphones and televisions can capture this, you know, and they can alert the ne nearest healthcare providers. And also somehow in Israel, they have got uh, kind of uh, uh, drones, pilotless drones, which can be flown in to the patient's rescue. So this is where we are heading to. Uh, so AI has got immense potential, and I think this can uh, this can be uh, you know this can change the way we see you know medical care nowadays. Okay, doctor. So if you have one message to give to young doctors, young cardiologists, what would it be? Uh, the uh, message would be uh, see. There is a sea change in entire medical fraternity, but uh, especially in cardiology, it has it is really amazing, you know. Uh, coming from uh, coronary intervention to structural heart interventions to artificial hearts, we can uh, deploy artificial hearts, and then cardiac transplant is also coming in a big way. Uh, so it's very lucrative. The, the the bottom line is a good training. So and shouldn't be you know feel disheartened 
during your initial period when you are put through harsher times, but you have to go to every detail and then learn things systematically. Uh, this is the message to all the youngsters and maybe the results will be even wonderful in future. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot, Doctor. Thanks Thank a you. lot for coming over. Thank you. Thank you. So that was Dr. Dilip Kumar telling us how technology will transform healthcare practice greatly. For more such insightful sessions, stay tuned to Indian Stents Get Updated.